Hi, welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt. And this one is on another level. This is the Ford F-150 Lightning, and this isn't our first go in this truck. Earlier this year, we spent a week with the one peg lower Lariat trim. And for the life of me, I couldn't find anything wrong with the Lariat that would inspire me to look at a Platinum. So we're gonna walk through the differences between these two trucks, and there's a big one we have to cover right away. And that's the battery. The Lariat we had packed the 131 kilowatt hour extended battery, while this Platinum gets the 98 kilowatt hour standard range battery. We get the same 775 pound-feet of torque, but here we've got 452 horsepower, 128 less than the big battery. And we're limited with a 230 mile range, and that's a generous number as this weather starts to get colder. Look, it's not like this thing feels slow. It's got dual motor all-wheel drive, and it still does zero to 60 in under four and a half seconds. However, the issue is the 230 mile range isn't that great, and this doesn't have a heat pump for this generation, so there could be certain situations where you have to choose between being warm and maybe getting to your destination. Getting the smaller battery will also affect things like your towing, payload, and the ability to get the Ford wall box, which easily allows your truck to become a generator for your house in the event you lose power. Depending on power draw, the Lightning can run the average American home for up to three days. But back to how this thing drives. If you remember back to the Lariat that we drove earlier this year, I really only had two complaints. The first being that the steering was laughably numb and vague, and the ride wasn't as supple as I wanted it to be for the being air suspension. I'm happy to report here though, both those things are improved. The ride is excellent, and the steering isn't sports car engaging, but it really shouldn't be. Also, weirdly, the Lariat we had earlier didn't have an option for propulsion sound, another thing that's been righted here in its platinum grade. With these fixes, though, I really don't think there's a single thing that Ford missed behind the wheel. The power is smooth and it's plentiful. The ride is supple and it doesn't remind you that, yes, you're in a pickup truck. The visibility is excellent. The cabin isolation is pretty good. I got a little whistling over this A-pillar on the driver's side. And even the Blue Cruise co-pilot system or whatever, it's top notch. And I think one of the coolest things about this truck is just kind of the incognito nature of it. I mean, I drove this thing around for the past week and even around other car people, car enthusiasts, people that would know. And they kind of scratch their heads like, is that the F-150, is that the Lightning? And it's just kind of cool. You take something that is inherently good, the F-150, and it just happens to be the electric version of it. Sure, the lighting is unique to the Lightning and each trim of Lightning gets its own unique grill applique. But if you didn't know and you weren't looking hard, you couldn't tell this from a normal F-150. At least until someone opened the frunk, which is cavernous. And it has 2.4 kilowatt service through four 120 volt outlets, along with a drain and storage organizer. There are some mirrored accents on the front fender, but only the driver's side opens up to reveal the charging port. The profile is very familiar, but with subtle lightning badging on the rear bedside. And around the back, there's a small Zappy America badge, but other than that, and the wraparound taillights, you'd never know. But then we get to the business end of the Lightning. Now, all Lightnings actually come as a crew cab configuration with a five and a half foot bed. And you get things like your typical F-150 stuff, like your normal step-in, you've got the rulers, the protractors, the built-in bottle openers, all of that normal stuff, plus this tailgate is automatic up, which is just super nice. And then, of course, you get the more robust features, like your Pro Power onboard system here. I mean, combined with the 2.4 kilowatt up front, this thing makes almost 10,000 watts, which is enough to run a normal house. Ford says it'll run the normal or average, I guess, American household for up to three days, which is just impressive. You've got 120 volts and a 240 back here. It's just impressive. And then when we talk about the more conventional truck stuff, this thing does 7,700 pounds of towing capacity and 2,000 pounds of payload capacity. And both of those figures are unique to the smaller battery here on this Platinum. And then, much like the exterior, the interior is basically a clone of a normal F-150, although it does have a massive vertical tablet being the big differentiator. 
In this Platinum, you have all the things you could possibly ask for. Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, a massive panoramic roof, wireless car play, wireless charging, a digital gauge cluster, 360 cameras, live readouts of payload weights and power draws from your Pro Power system, an incredible adaptive cruise and lane keeping blue cruise system, you have heated rear seats, and the luxury list goes on. But you are surrounded by some of the nicest leathers and aluminums that Ford has to offer. These seats are very comfy and they fold all the way down if you want to take a little nap. And yes, this does have the fold open work surface and then there's simply the space. I mean, it's huge and comfortable just like you would get in a normal F-150 crew cab. You really want to get into the weeds. Last week we spent time in the Ram Limited and there's just, just not quite the same level of detail that you got in that Ram. But with that, I think it's time to get into final thoughts. When it comes down to it, I really only have one issue with this Lightning Platinum. It's $93,500 as tested, and that's for the small battery. And if it were me, especially in the colder states here, there's no question I'd want the big battery, which would put this Lightning on the wrong side of $100,000. And I am genuinely blown away by how good this truck is, but there's gonna be a time in the next three to five years where we look back and think, damn, we really paid six figures for an electric F-150. Not an electric Raptor, an F-150.